Hello, so this is section 3E, and in this section I'm going to detail really one of the more salient applications of matrices and matrix algebra, something called a Markov chain. So Markov, by the way, was a late 19th century Russian probabilist, and his name to this day is still commonly encountered all over the place in statistics and probability literature. Simply put, a Markov chain is a sequence of vectors, oftentimes called state vectors, where specifically those vectors meet a probability criterion. So let's see some notation then. So we have a sequence of what are called state vectors for a Markov chain. By the way, these vectors will be called state vectors because one of the goals typically of Markov chains is to model change of a dynamical process over time, i.e. we will re relate the state at say time zero, time one, time two, and so forth for this dynamical process. In addition to that, each of the vectors is in a mathematical sense called the probability vector, i.e. the sum of the components equals one. So for instance, the vector, let's say x naught 0.5.5 in R2, of course the sum of those components is one, so that would be called a probability vector. And the reason we're bringing probability vectors into the fold here is because we're gonna describe this dynamical change over time through a probabilistic mechanism. And in particular, that mechanism or that engine, if you will, that drives or defines the Markov chain will be actualized through matrix multiplication and more specifically through multiplication by what's called a stochastic matrix. Let's fill in then some of the mathematical details behind a Markov chain now. So once more, a Markov chain is a sequence of vectors. We'll refer to those vectors as state vectors because we're describing the states of a dynamical process over time. In a mathematical sense, those vectors are probability vectors. In other words, the sum of the components equals one. How then do we define this transition from state to state in our Markov chain? Well, that's established through something called the Markov condition. So what we're gonna do, in other words, is at state time, let's say k, we have our vector x sub k, to determine the next state of our system, the next vector, in other words, in our sequence, we multiply that current vector on the left by a matrix P, and that matrix is what's called a stochastic matrix, and all that means is that the columns of the matrix P are probability vectors. In other words, the sum of the components for each of those columns equals one, respectively, and here's a simple example of a stochastic matrix, then notice the sum of the components of column one is one, and the sum of the components of column two is also equal to one. Now what's vital here in the definition of this Markov chain is again this Markov condition. You'll notice one of the consequences of that Markov condition is the following, and this could be called a model assumption, right, for our Markov chain, is that each vector by definition here in our sequence depends only on the previous state. So we can say this dynamical process has a short-term memory, in other words. We're only looking at the previous state. We then multiply by this matrix P, this stochastic matrix, and then we establish what the next state in the chain is.